For those undergraduates that will be um, uh, reading and looking at this interview, um, is this an interesting time to be an, an accountant or an auditor? Well, I think, let's, can I combine those two, sure. the accountant and auditor? You know, I, I think this, I think it's a fantastic profession. Uh, to qualify as a CPA or a chartered accountant or whatever the designation is around the world, um, as my father said to me many years ago, it provides you with a key. Now, you, it's up to you which door you want to open with the key. It could be in the profession, public accounting. It could be going into industry, striving to be a CFO or a CEO of a group. It could be into not-for-profit, going to work for the World Bank, European banks, reconstruction and development. It's a fantastic qualification. And I know from time to time, we come under the microscope as a profession. We did, as I mentioned, with, with Enron. Um, when many, the fall off post Enron of young kids wanting to be CPAs mm -hmm. was marked, they were looking at doing MBA programs as opposed to becoming CPAs. There's a reversal on that now. And I think if you speak to uh, bankers and uh, market makers around the world, we as accountants have a major role still to play in the whole structure of capital markets and that society. So I think it's a, it's a great qualification. Um, you know, in the US and the UK, um, one in six graduates from all disciplines go into accounting, wow. one in six. And the other demographic, which is an interesting one, is 70% of those, both in the United States and the UK and Western Europe, but specifically the UK, are ladies. So the challenge is, the challenge is, uh, you know, we've got this wonderful, uh, the, our profession has always demanded the brightest people, excluding me, <laughs> but have always demanded the brightest people. So here we've got, here we've got all these very bright young people coming to, to this. How do we retain women in our profession? And that's the challenge across the world. That, that's because they have family obligations and children to raise and um, yes. what other considerations? Well, that, that, that would be it. I mean, if you look at our major firms in the United States um, and, and, and in Western Europe particularly, and Australia and so on, the percentage of partners that are ladies is relatively low. The British firm, for instance, have said in its publications that it would like in the next five years one-third of its partners to be female. And that will require, you know, it is, it is the marriage. I'm conscious that you can board on sexism here, and it's not meant to be, but, you know, you have the young ladies become managers, and they meet somebody, and they marry. And I know people say, well, you know, they have a little baby. You can provide them with a laptop, and they can work at home. That's not quite, they, they tend to have a second, maybe even a third. And they become, you know, their, their aspirations are in different areas. So we, we have to do a number of things. And I, I'm not saying I've got the market focus on all of that. But for instance, maybe providing crashes in offices. Many Deutsche Bank in London provide a crash for their young female staff to bring their little ones in whilst they're working. But I think it's something we have to, we have to look at.